How's everybody doing tonight? Amen? Good. Amen. I know, too, that's probably got a good rest. <laughs> it's good to see everybody in service tonight. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be back tonight, ready to see what God has in store for us, ready to see, uh, ready just to worship and praise God and, 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 and just, I don't, I, I don't know how many were here. I don't remember how many were here for the, the pray-in service, but we played us some Eddie James. And you know what? It's just something about coming together and just, and just getting in a in mindset of praise that just changes the atmosphere. Yeah. And, and I love that about coming to church is uh, coming together with brothers and sisters and just getting in a mindset of praise and worship. Because no matter what you're going on out there, it sits on pause for a moment, right, Sister Jen? It just sits on pause for a minute so we can just spend some time with brothers and sisters and in the presence of the Lord. Let's stand all over the building. Let's invite the Holy Spirit just to have his way. He said where there's two or three gathered together, there he is in the midst. So he's already here, but we just want to invite him just to do whatever he wants to do, whatever he sees fit in service tonight. Father, we love you and we thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, that when we come together, you meet us right where we're at, Lord. And Father, we just pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit can move and have his way, have will in this service. This is your territory, Lord. We just pray that you have your way in this. Order our steps, order our voices, order our talents, Lord. God, just for one thing and one thing only, and that's to worship and praise you, God. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. Come on, let's put our hands together and let's worship God for a little bit. Amen. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air.
gospel ship. Let's not get too much in a hurry, though, okay? Amen. How many's ready to go see Jesus? Amen. But I'll tell you what, I think he's calling us to work right now while we're here on earth. As Pastor preached this morning, an outstanding job. How many enjoy the message this morning? Amen. 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 We'll get ready. We got part two coming. Amen. But uh, being coming from servant to soldier, you know, I, 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 I believe that. When you're stuck in sin, you can be a servant to sin. And so I don't know about you, but I'm glad to know I can leave that stuff alone from a servant to a soldier. Amen. And that, that message really blessed my heart. And I believe that God is calling his soldiers to awaken, to rise up. It's time to go to war. It's time to go to battle. Amen. And um, begin to fight off the enemy that's been fighting us for so long. Amen. Let's, we're going to come to you tonight. If you didn't have the uh, the opportunity to give in tithes this morning, I want to give you that opportunity um, tonight. And Brother Tony's got all that up there, all the information for you. So let's let's just stand, and uh, that just makes it easier for you to get what you need to get. But let's all stand. Let's just uh, bless this offering tonight. Father, we love you. And we thank you so much, Lord. God, we pray that you'd bless the hands that are able to give, Lord. Lord, you know all of this goes to forward your kingdom here on earth, Lord, as we're here, Lord. And God, we want to set your kingdom up here in Paragold, Arkansas. So I pray, Lord, that all, the, all that's given, Lord, that it would just multiply, that it see every need, Lord. And God, that we're able to give back into the community your word, your gospel, Lord. God, that we can see lives changed, souls saved, Lord. That's what it's all about. We thank you for this, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
knows he has got a sweet name, amen? Jesus, there ain't no other name like it, amen? I could say Dwayne all you want, but there ain't going to be no change there. You might think of some knucklehead that, that used to have hair down to his shoulders, now got some kind of swoop going on with his hair. It ain't going to do you no different, but when you say Jesus... Something changes, amen. When you say Jesus, whatever the enemy has built up in front of you to try to stop you, it has to crumble. When you say Jesus, whatever faces in front of you, whatever tries to stand in front of you, has to bow. When you say Jesus, heaven's gates and hell's flames, boy, I'm telling you what, they shake at the name of Jesus. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I don't know about you, but I want to praise him tonight. Hallelujah. I want to give him all the praise and worship that he is so worthy of. And I like the fact that I like to know the Bible tells me that when we begin to praise, he inhabits the praise of his people. That means he just comes down and just joins us. Hallelujah. He lives in it. So let's do that tonight. And let's think back where you used to be maybe even where you could be and think I got a reason to praise God amen I don't know about you but I know where I used to be <laughs> amen if it wasn't for God doing what he did in my life I, I promise you I would have been dead I wouldn't be standing here right now but thank God he met me right where I was at. A stubborn head, hard head, just not knowing what I'm doing in life. Said, you know what, Dwayne, just follow me. I thank God that I did, amen. So let's give him what he's worthy of tonight. And let's worship God as Sister Christy leads us into worship. Sun 
come I can't control Cause I want more of you Somebody needs to get a hold of this tonight I want more of you God I'm not satisfied Where I'm at right now God I want more I want more Lord Come on Let that be your prayer tonight I want more of you God Set a fire down in my soul That I can't contain I can't control Up appreciation tonight. Amen. 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 Isn't it good to be in the house of God tonight? Amen. Amen. We are we are guests tonight. We have guests in the building tonight. We have royalty in our house tonight. Amen. We have upper echelon in our building. Do you know that? We got a district man in the house. <laughs> we got our district king men director in our house tonight, and his beautiful wife and son. We're glad to have the Briley's with us tonight. Amen. And appreciate them so much. Y'all didn't know y'all was so important that 
upper guys and gals come by and see you, did you? Amen. But we're honored to have them in service and always enjoy their visit when they can come visit. And uh, if I would have known in the head advance, he'd be in this pulpit tonight. And that's probably why he didn't tell me. I played that game a time or two. But uh, anyway, he is coming. He's going to be here with us. Matter of fact, just real soon, because we need to get our king's men set in order. And uh, matter of fact, we talked about that this morning. And so I'm um, looking forward to that. Got to know this wonderful couple a few months ago at Branson at, at High Points Adventure. And um, really got to know this couple and just fell in love with them. And, and uh, we have just developed a good friendship. And, um, and uh, I texted him the other night. And I'll, I'll have to tell him myself before he answered back, I went to sleep. I mean, tell you, I just, I just went to sleep, and then it was late the next day before I realized I never answered him back. But, but uh, anyhow, <clears throat> he has one of them long-winded preachers at his church too. I just kidding, Pastor. If you're watching tonight, I just kidding. But uh, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, oh no, I'm not going to do that to him. But uh, we just thank God for you. Appreciate you. For being in the house of the Lord, I really enjoyed myself this morning preaching the word. Amen. And we're going to have another good time tonight. I'm going to finish up what I started this morning. Don't often get to do that. Normally, I just kind of leave things hanging. I don't like to do that. And so I stole associate pastor's position. He's done that to me a time or two, and he's called me and said, I don't know if you got a word or not, but I really believe I got a word, and if you don't mind, I'd like to have the pulpit Sunday, and, and uh, I've, I've, gra- I've gladly stepped aside. And so uh, it's a partnership, and we understand that. Amen. But we're thankful for you. We need to pray. Uh, there was a church shooting this morning in Texas, and... Uh, Sweet pastors lost his life, and uh, some others have been injured, so we need to pray and uplift this church. Let me make this announcement. I don't need to make this announcement over the airways, but I'm going to make it. If you're the first one in this building, look this building over real good. If you're the first one in this building, pastor got to church early this morning and was making his rounds and went in the bathroom and found a man hunkered down in the bathroom. Pastor drawed his weapon and uh, the man took the weapon away from him and shot him. So I want to encourage you, if you're the first one in this place, amen, to um, show up here, make your rounds, okay? Okay. We're living in perilous days, folk, and we might as well admit it. Evil days are here, and um, perilous times are here, and we don't know uh, what's going to take place in the days to come. I'm praying. I'm praying for a a miracle to take place in just a few weeks, and uh, believing God's going to do it, and uh, only God can do it, but we're, we're praying. But uh, if we have a change in presidents, I'm afraid we're in for a rocky road. Amen. I really believe that with all of my heart. And um, uh, matter of fact, is my phone laying over there? Let me give my phone, babe. I want you to do me a favor. Thank you. I want you to. I want you to honor me with something. How many? How many members when we had? Jason Rapert with us, Senator Jason Rapert with us. Um, do you all remember that? Senator Jason Rapert has put together, it's called National Association of Christian Lawmakers. This church just become a member of that, whether you realize it or not, and you didn't know that, but this church just become a member of Christian Lawmakers of America, the National Association of Christian Lawmakers. I want you to go there, National Association Christian Lawmakers. National Association Christian Lawmakers. 
and you can join that or you can be a part of that and um and um there is several that has already come on board uh we need some christian lawmakers to come on board and and uh brother Rapert, senator Rapert is working real hard to bring in some godly men and women uh if you become a member of that um certain times and of the year you'll be part of uh, different phone calls and different things going on in the community community your community he'll make you aware of things going on in the community and um if if individually you want to be a part of that i, I would really encourage you to do so and uh it it helps us um i don't know how to say this without just saying it i'm not so much worried about me as i am my kids and my grandkids um we're, we're this whole world is chaotic and um and so if i can help help bring change by supporting something like this that i'm going to support i've always we've always supported missions because i had this theory in mind if i can't go i can at least so hello and uh and so you know i i don't see any time in my future that I'm going to run for public office or anything like that. But I can support those who are in it that are in it for a good cause. And so $120 a year is, is to become a member of that. This church has become a member of that. I would like every church to become a member of that. If you're listening to me on, online and you have a church, I, I want you to look that up and um, become a part of that, that we can change the course of our children and our grandchildren. Amen. Amen. Folk, they're meeting in Senate today. They're swearing in new senators today. It has been brought before Congress to change the wording. Uh, we can no longer say man or woman or father or mother or son or or daughter that's being changed that's, that's being pushed to be changed because there's gender gender neutrality so you know other words there's something like 120 new genders now ain't this a mess senator Rapert got a phone call last week and um, from a counselor from the school and they now have children in the school that has taken on the gender of an animal. It is a mess. I got news for you. God created man and woman. That's it. We just sent several millions of dollars to Pakistan to study gender. <laughs> Hello? Amen. You got six hundred dollars. Pakistan got several million to study study gender. I, I don't get. I don't. You don't have to pay me. I know about gender. Man, woman, free. Didn't cost you a dime. If you want to give me your six hundred dollars, I'll take it. <laughs> Ain't that a mess? But this is the world that we're living in. That's why I believe in this. Association of Christian Lawmakers, and uh, I encourage you to, to get in, get on board with that, get involved with that. We'll be having Brother Senator Rapert back with us just real soon, and uh, we're looking forward to having here back in our meeting, be in our service again. Amen, and we're just looking forward to it. <clears throat> Amen. Um, several have asked about our prayer, our fast calendar this calendar after tonight's service you can go to um alc paragould alc paragould i ain't got the shakes i'm shaking it alc paragould that brings you up to our our website and you'll be able to um is there a dot org or dot anything behind that dot com alc paragould dot com and uh, you'll be able to uh print one of these off and several have asked about those. I don't mind sending them to you. Don't don't take that I I don't want to send them. I don't mind at all. But uh, 
most everything that we do is we we have such a such a tremendous uh, folk. You guys don't have a clue what this young man does. We have such a wonderful, talented, gifted um, media pastor that makes sure all this stuff is took care of. And and um, <clears throat> now, even though he turned my microphone off this morning while I was preaching, I didn't much appreciate that. But uh, no, he said he didn't do it. But uh, uh, I appreciate Brother Tony. Don't you appreciate Brother Tony? Come on, give Brother Tony a good hand clap of appreciation. Let Brother Tony know you love him. Hey, man, you on Facebook ought to do the same because if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't be seeing us. And I appreciate him so, so very, very much. Hey, man, this is one of our spiritual sons. I pastored him when he was 11, 12 years old and uh, parted ways, and then we got him back. Isn't that sweet? I love that, and uh, just just good, just good, and I appreciate it. Brother Tony. Also, also, any message being preached, any message being preached, you can go to that same alcparagould.com, and you can buy any message that's been preached that, that you've heard, and uh, um, that, uh, well, there's several on there now. You can go and look. Also, we need you to do something else. We need you to go to our YouTube page and subscribe. We got to get beyond this number. Amen. Let's let's push for this. Let's work for this. And um, and I don't I don't know. We'll just see what God takes us into as the year goes. We've got some good ideas. Amen. <clears throat> At least they're good to me. But anyway. I'll be going back in the book of Genesis 14 tonight. I, it, with your permission, I am not reading all those names that I couldn't pronounce this morning. Amen. Now, since we've got a district man here, he might be able to read those names. Um, it's, just, it's just depending on things, so. But, uh, but anyway, uh, I'm not even going to try to read those again. Amen. I'll quit picking on him. He's, he's just a good old guy. He's a district guy, but he's a good guy. Amen. He can't help that. He got voted in just like I did. What was we thinking? Amen. Genesis chapter 14. Let's see where I want to start reading at. Um, amen. Now, <clears throat> verses 1 through 10 talks about all these tribes and all these nations that are coming together and they're going to battle and uh, they're going to war and um, <clears throat> and they're they're fighting between each other and and we found out um, that they they went even against Sodom and they took Lot and his family and everything that he had. So let's start there in verse number eleven. They took. All the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all the victuals, and went their way. Verse 12, and they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and all his goods, and they departed. And there come one that had escaped and told Abram, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, the brother of Ishkal, the brother of Aner. And these were confederate with Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, this verse I read to you this morning, spent a lot of time on it, but I want to look at it again because I've never seen this verse before. When Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. He divided unto himself against them, he and his servants by night, smote them, pursued them unto Hobah, which is the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods. Somebody say all the goods. 
He also brought again his brother, Lot, his goods, and the women also, and the people. We'll stop reading there. I want to pick up where I left off this morning, my thought in mind, from servants, from servants to soldiers, from servants to soldiers. Father, I love you. God, I believe with everything within me, you've given me this word for such a time as this. <clears throat> and Father, I'm asking God that you would just speak to our hearts tonight. God, that you'd give us the liberty and the anointing to be able to preach the gospel without fear nor favor. I'm asking God that you would just anoint us from on high. God, that you'd give us spiritual unction. God, to, to, provide, to provide what you have laid on my heart to give to these that are gathered in this building tonight. I pray we leave better than we came in Jesus' name. We thank you for it now. We worship you for it now. And we give all glory and honor to you. And the church says a big amen, amen. and amen from servants to soldiers. From servants to soldiers. I was told several years ago by a gentleman, maybe he learned this by experience, I'm not sure. But he told me, he said, if you ever want to get whooped real good, that's Arkansas language, if you ever want to get just a good old whipping, corner a coward. I don't know how he knew that, maybe he did, but... Uh, that's what he told me. I wasn't planning on getting a whooping, so I never cornered one. <laughs> Amen. But uh, I'm not saying that Abram was a coward at all. Abram was called of God. We know that God had promised Abram a whole lot of stuff that was in the way distance. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And he believed it. His faith wavered not. He believed what God said he was going to do. God told him one day to look up. And Abram looked up and he said, can you count those stars? And Abraham said, Lord, no, you, you know I can't count those stars. He said, that's what your generation's going to be. I'm going to bless you. Took him out to the seaside and said, can you count the sand the grains, the kernels of sand that's on the seashore here. And he said, can't count them, Lord. He said, that's the way I'm going to multiply you. And Abram, become Abraham at an old age, God told him, you're going to bring forth a son at an old age. He believed God for it. You might know what I'm talking about. Sometimes God promises us things that seem to be almost unreachable. Now, I'm, I'm coasting, but I'll, I'll, I'll get this thing rolling down here, here in just a minute, and we'll pick up a little bit of steam. But, but sometimes God gives us promises that seem to be out of reach and almost seems to be um, just to the point that it just is almost impossible um, through the years, God has given myself promises and told me about some things that, that uh, he was going to do that to this day I've not yet seen to come to pass, but I believe. And here's the point to that is you don't have to believe for me to believe. I just need to believe what God said to me. You not coming on board with me don't change my belief. Amen. It don't change it at all. If I really believe, I believe. That's all that matters. So we know that Abram was a man of faith. I told you this morning that God spoke to Abram and said to him, I want you to leave your family. I want you to leave your kinsmen. I want you to begin on a journey. I'm going to take you on a journey, and I'll tell you when you arrived. You won't know till you get there, but when you get there, I'll let you know. I'll fill you in. This is the place. I don't like those kind of trips. I never did like those kind of trips. I want to know where I'm going. 
Even when I was ornery in school, if they was going to send me to the principal office, I wouldn't know where I was going. And I, Lord knows I spent enough time there, I knew where it was at. And that's a different message for a different time. But Abraham, he wanted to know, but God said, you just follow me and I'll lead you. I meant to bring every city that Abram was took to, and it, it will boggle your mind, and it'll be, good some, it'll be some just good Bible study for you if you'll take some time and just study out all the places that God would take Abram. And he would leave him there for a period of time, and then he would move him on to another place, and then to another place, and then to another place. He didn't start leaving until he turned 75 years old. <clears throat> Now I told you this morning I'm I'm uh, I'm 56 and and uh, I'm I'm looking for retirement and uh, Abraham didn't even start the ministry till he was 75. So if God if God bases ministry upon him, then I ain't even started yet. So forget retirement. That's out of the picture. Amen. Someone asked my dad one time, and I'll get into the word, but they asked my dad. I asked him, said, Brother Russell, when are you going to retire? He said, when I die, that's when I'll retire. But until then, I'll stay in the ministry, and he did. He stayed in the ministry at the best of his ability. But let's get back to our story here tonight. Amen. These armies come, and they attack Sodom and Gomorrah. And when they went into it, they took possessions, and they took Lot and his family and all the goods out of that city. And somebody got free, the Scripture says, and, and uh, there was one that escaped. Amen. Thank God. But there was one that escaped and come to Abram and told Abram the story that your nephew has been taken captive, and his wife and his children and everything they got has been taken. It's been robbed and stripped from them. And Abram didn't take opportunity to wait on someone else. Abram looked in his household at what he had, and uh, he took those servants that he had. Uh, the Bible said he armed his trained servants. He armed his trained servants. I, I think this is a good message for the beginning of this year. I, I, want, I want to arm our servants to be trained for warfare. This is not a game we're playing, folk. This is not a game we're playing. I, I mean to tell you, this has not come three days of uh, services a week or two services a week or even one service a week. And, and um, you know, you just go through your happy life. Uh, we're in a battlefield, if you realize that or not. This is a warfare that we're talking about. Anytime the Lord talks about activity in the Word of God, He uses word like fight. You fight a good fight. Or He talks about wrestle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And you know what I'm talking about. And He talks about races. He said, you run the race. Amen. He's talked about a very active role in this thing that you're not going to be lazy and make it to heaven. I know I said that out loud, and that was not real popular, but you've got to get involved in the program of God. And I'm telling you, if you're dependent on just showing up to church, amen, and making heaven your home just to, based upon your Sunday attendance, I'm afraid some of us ain't going to make it. Hello? Amen. Because it takes more than Sunday attendance. It's got to be. It's got to be deeper than that. You gotta. You gotta fight for it. Sometimes it's through travail. Sometimes it's through hard prayer. Amen. David said, "I am pressing hard to God. I'm pressing hard." He later on, you'd find different ones uh, that would talk about the press. Amen. But David talked about I'm, I'm reaching hard toward God. Amen. There's, so, so Abram armed those in his house for warfare. Now, again, it amazed me that in Abram's house, there was 318 people in his house. 
Now that just, again, that just blows my hat in the creek. And, and, uh, that just, that's amazing that Abram had 318 servants that's been following him. Now a lot of these were born in different places that he had journeyed. And so we know that because he said they were born in his house. Amen. Now I'm going to say something about that, about spiritual birth, because I found this out very, very, uh, uh, plainly as, as been pastor for all these years, that if you can get somebody to be really born again in the house, they'll stay with you. I have found that out. They'll stick with you. Amen. I mean to tell you, they'll fall in love with you. Matter of fact, I, I remember a young man that, uh, that got saved in the church that we used to pastor and he heard the, he heard the, a song that was played about the pastor that, a song in the reference to a pastor that brought him the word. And, and he couldn't wait to, to get me to hear that, that song because there was a knit, there was a connection between he and I because in all reality, he, he looked at me as a father figure, but also knew that it was the first hearing of the word through me. He didn't put a credit on me of getting saved, but he appreciated for me for preaching the word. That's where I'm going with that. But Abram would take these 318 people who knew nothing but servanthood, who knew nothing but uh, taking care of the things around the house. Um, I've done just a little bit of research uh, today on this because something left me stumped this morning. And so when something leaves me stumped, I, I have to go home and try to figure it out. And, and so I, I went home and figured it out, and I began to look through some stuff. And, and uh, it, it, uh, through history, it tells us that oftentimes on, on these type of people such as Abram, which was a man of wealth, a man of prestige, it was never uncommon for him to have a blacksmith, a man that would belong to him as a servant. Now, I asked you the question this morning where Abram happened to get these, uh, these, all these swords. He said he armed them, he man, these 318 that pursued him. I, I, I had to ask the question this morning where they get all these swords. And, and so, um, maybe custom is right. I, I can't, I can't put any proof on that and, and don't, don't meet me at the church and line me out if I'm wrong. I, I, I've done my best to find it and couldn't find it. But according to history, that's what it tells us. And it very well could have been so. We do know that, that, uh, that he had plenty. But he armed these people to go out and get back what the enemy stole from them. Now, we're, we're, um, we're seeing a, a, a world that is really looking toward government. We're seeing a world that is looking for leadership as man, amen, like never before. We're, we're seeing uh, um, uh, a group that is searching for answers uh, in a man, and uh, I can tell you that it's not going to happen. I believe that if there's going to be anything that changed the direction of which the world is going in, the church is going to have to arm itself one more time and get back in the fight and do something for the kingdom of God. And I'm going to tell you something. A man stands the tallest when he's on his knees. Hello? I believe that with all of my heart. And so we, we found that Abram, armed his servants and they went out and they began to smite the bible said he smote them and pursued them amen and he brought back all the goods amen all the goods i don't know about you but I've watched the devil tear up homes and families and to bring destruction to churches but as far as i can go I about had all I can handle. Anybody with me on that? Uh, amen. And Abram said, you're not going to do this to my kind. What would happen if the church began to fight for one another instead of fighting against one another? What would happen if the church began to look around and see the spiritual warfare of our brother and come to their defense Amen. And fight for them in a time of prayer and supplication. 
and even let them know that I'm standing with you and I'm standing beside you. And anytime you need a prayer partner, you're just a, we're just a phone call away. How many knows we could defeat a lot of foes that come against the church world today? Too many times we have to fight our battles by ourselves. There should never be a church member of this church have to fight a battle by yourself. Too many times we're afraid to let our requests be made known because we're afraid instead of somebody praying for us, they'll run their mouth and tell somebody else. Well, I didn't mean to get that critical and hard tonight, but it's fact and, and we, we've gone through a, we've gone through a pattern and a time where the church has lost trust. But I believe that God's going to bring the church back to the place that she used to be. And I'm not living in yesterday at all. I don't want to go back to a brush arbor. I don't want to go back to out in, out sitting outside and doing services. And we've had to do a few of those with this COVID. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't like one of them. I, I just, you know, I thank God we had the means to do those and we've done the best we could do with what we could do. And, and, uh, but I'm, I'm too easily distracted. I'm here to tell you, I got a problem. Amen. And I'm so easily distracted. One thing that I've learned that, that God has done for me in preaching, I don't see nothing. God has done that for me. God has helped me with that because if I seen half of the things that people told me went on in the church, it would have surely messed up my preaching. I promise you it would have. But I didn't, I didn't know half of it and God hid that from me. Amen. But, but Abram, I, I gotta quit straying. I gotta get with this. Abram, he equipped those servants. And you say, preacher, we got it. I understand. But he equipped those servants and he went and he got back. He meant every single thing that was stowed, and he, I like this part, he brought again his brother. Amen. He brought against his brother. Brother James Baker, our, our past uh, district bishop, used to have a saying that he would say all the time, and it was, no more fallen comrade. Amen. We'll have no more fallen comrade. Can we as a church adopt that mentality today? We'll have no more fallen comrade. Amen. You know what he was saying? Amen. We're going to be a hand that's going to help up them that fall. I like Abram's word. He's talking about his nephew here, but he said, I brought back my brother. <laughs> amen. Look at it. He said, I brought back Amen. All the goods, and I brought again my brother. Amen. I also brought his goods and his, the women, also the people. So can I tell you today, if you'll reach one, amen, you'll oftentimes reach the whole bunch. And so, so Abram went to get Lot, but he brought back a whole lot more than he went to get. Amen. The news was they took Lot, your nephew, and he went and got it, but he took back, he got everything. I mean to tell you, he brought back everything that all of these other people over here that I can't say, he brought back everything that they stole. Now that's word. That's in the word of God. You, you'll find that they, that he did. He said that he brought back all the goods, all that was brought again to the brother Lot. He brought goods and the women. And the king of Sodom went out to meet after and returned after the slaughter. Amen. The king come and met him. Melchizedek, the king, showed up and, 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 uh, and brought forth bread and wine. And, and he was the priest of the most high God. And, and they blessed him and said, blessed are, be Abram. Said, blessed are Abram of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. Blessed be the most high God that has delivered thine, enem thine enemies unto thy hand. And he gave him tithe. Melchizedek gave, gave tithe. And, and the king of Sodom said to Abram, give me the persons and take the goods thyself. So look here. He said, I know you got, I know you took possession of everything that they stole. Abram just went to get his nephew and his possessions, but he wound up taking everything and brought it back. And, and now we find them coming to Abraham, Abram and saying, just give us the, the men. Just give us the men. And you know the story. Abram said, I don't want any of it. I don't want none of it. I don't even want to shoe latch it. 
Amen. I don't want anything of that saved. That that I want these young men that that went with us. I want them to have something that they can eat and they can have a portion. And Amen. And he he gave to them. He said, "But I won't take anything that is thine, lest you should say you made Abraham rich." Abraham said, if there's going to be any proclamation about me, it's not going to be made by man. It's going to be made by God. Oh, I feel the preacher just unzip me and step in me right there for a second. Amen. But can I tell you, Abraham said, if there's going to be a proclamation, if there's going to be anything spoken highly of me, I'd rather be spoken highly of me of God than by man any day of my life. Amen. We're too busy trying to get the recognition of man. We're too busy trying to get the recognition and the pats on the back of those around. We become in competition with this church and that church. And if that church had 20, we had 22. If that church had 30, we had 35. And on and on we go. We become in competition. Years ago, God spoke to me and chastised me. Amen. Our church was growing. We had, we had reached a good number and, and and we had we had people getting saved i mean quicker than i could i could hardly have a service god is my witness people were getting saved every sunday we seeing people getting saved and, and delivered and set free and that's where the birth of this book come from and and i had to put this together because we were bringing in so many new con, converts and and then they were just new converts off the street and they didn't know how to live and so i put to get together this book hallelujah you're saved now what and uh, was able to put it in several people's hands. Uh, amen. But God chastised me because he, different ones would ask me, you know, uh, how much you running? And I would just tell them, you know, I didn't think it was a big deal. They asked. But God chastised me one time and told me, don't do that no more. I don't want you to do that no more. And I, I thought, well, God, they asked, so I told. I, I was proud of it, and I guess that was a problem. Amen. I didn't know I was in that way of proud, but but God said, don't do it no more. Don't tell about it. Don't don't. If they ask you, just say, we're doing good for the kingdom of God. God's blessing us, and just leave it at that. Amen. And so I obeyed God in that manner. Amen. And I, I don't know what that meant, but it meant something for God in me. In my life, God was saying, I need to correct you on that. Nowadays, when I hear people talk about the great exploits their church is doing, Brother Briley, it immediately takes me back to what God said. And God said, I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to do that. Amen. Now, listen to me. I don't think there's anything wrong bragging on your church. I don't think there's anything wrong. Matter of fact, I think you ought to be proud where you go. I think you ought to, to promote it. I think you ought to try to bring people to it. I think you ought to do everything in your power to, to grow it. I think you ought to stand behind it, finance it, support it. All those things. Uh, amen. But when we begin to say our church is doing what no other church is doing, we're going to be brought to a level. God's going to take away and strip us of those things that he has given us. Now listen to me. I don't know why I'm going this way, but I'm just going to follow. But anyway, amen. But we got to be careful. If anything things happens at Abundant Life Pentecostal Church of God Church it's going to be to God be the glory God has done great things. Amen. Can we say that together? To God be the glory. God has done great things. That's going to be our proclamation. When somebody comes in and said, man, look what God's doing in your church. I want you to say to God be the glory. God has done great things. Amen. I'm not looking for recognition. You're not looking for recognition. We're not looking for recognition. We're just trying to add one more person to the kingdom of God. Amen. Is that not right? Amen. Is that not our objective? Is that not our plan uh, to reach those that need reached? Uh, amen. To reach those. We're not trying to maintain what we got. We've done that long enough. Amen. We was just happy with our four or five and no more. I'm not. Amen. I'm looking for more people. When I see new faces walk in the building like they did this morning and I see them get involved in worship and I see them asking about children's ministry. By the way, we need we need some help in that area. Amen. We need some help in the in the upper AJ 
ages, uh, amen, of, of children ministry, uh, amen. We need some help. Sister Candace, is, she's got them from babies to, to 18 years old, I guess, if they had go in there, and, and she has had them to that age. Uh, go back there. Uh, amen. We need some help. We need to break that up. She can't handle it all. And I understand that. I thank God in heaven for her every day. Amen. But I understand. Uh, amen. She can't handle it. So I'm saying that maybe to spur somebody's heart and you'll say, you know what? I want to get involved. I want to help. I can do something. I can help teach a class. I can help do that. Amen. Folk, can I tell you? Amen. I can pick that altar up and that booger's heavy. I can do it though. I can pick that altar up and I can carry it down an aisle. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to struggle with it. But it would be a whole lot easier if Brother Chris and Brother Dwayne and, and Brother Lucas said, Pastor, I can help you with that. And we all got a hold of the thing and begin to move it in the same direction and the same momentum. And Brother Don and different ones, uh, amen, begin to move it in the same direction. When we begin to move in the same direction, God can do something that one of us can't do alone. Amen. Can I tell you, when we become as a family knit together, amen, as Abram said to those servants, I thank God for you. You've served me well. You have done well. You brought me the platter. You brought me the water. You took care of the flock. You took care of the, the maintenance around the property. You've done what you've done. I thank God for you. But we got a brand new task that you've never done before. I'm going to put a sword in your hand. I'm going to train you. I think the scripture says, there that he trained them. Yes, it does. Verse number 14, he trained them. Amen. He taught them. A lot of the reasons, and I had a, I got a church, I, I got a church that is, that is, uh, that is needing a pastor, and they told me, they said, we want, we want a pastor to come in and train us, uh, to come in and teach us, to teach different ministries, and to teach you how to set up different groups and different areas. Boy, I tell you what I'd like to see in this church. Uh, I'd like to see us begin to branch out in different areas and different growths. Uh, I'm telling you, I ain't got a stingy bone in my body. If you want to do it, I'll let you do it. I'll join you. I'll help you. I'll pray for you. I'll support you. Amen. So I thank God for Sister Jennifer that says there's a need and I can feel it. Amen. Abraham, Abram said, you know what? My, my nephew's in trouble. Amen. I'm not going to depend on them unknowns. I'm not going to depend on them that I don't know. I'm not going to depend on those big names that I can't say in the first parts of this chapter. He said, I'm not going to depend. I don't have time to wait on somebody else to come in. I'm going to take what I got. I'm going to train them. I'm going to reinforce them and then I'm going to lead them to battle. I want you to know he didn't send them, but he went before them. He went with them. Amen. Can I tell you, you don't need a leadership that will send you, but you need leadership that will lead you. Brother Dwayne, I'm preaching to me and you today, buddy. Amen. we got to get a hold of this thing and understand that we got people that are walking in our footsteps, uh, and we need to be our Abram and say, you know what? I'm going to equip you. I'm going to put some things in your hands. Uh, I'm going to equip you for the journey. I'm going to equip you for the task. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay Study hard. I'm, I've got something that'll just work just fine in your area. And Abram went and done what no one else could do because Abra, Abram went in the ambition that this is my brother and I gotta go get him or he's gonna be lost forever or destroyed. Have we lost sight of our brother? Have we lost sight of our sister? Have we lost sight of those that are hurting and lonely and afraid? Have we lost sight of our community? God help us. God help me. God help you to get back a hold of this and say, God, instead of being a servant today, make me a soldier. Let me walk into the places where other people wouldn't walk and extend a hand of friendship and reach them for the kingdom of God. Hello? Here's the problem most of the time that we find is it just don't fit what we want to do. Amen. Now here's all these servants. They don't know nothing about sword fights. They don't know nothing about battle. They don't know nothing about warfare. They're servants. They're servants. But in the process of time, things change. Amen. 
Now, here, here's what I want to talk to you about tonight for just a few minutes, which means nothing. But anyway, um, I want us to get to the place in this life that, God, I want to be a step higher than I am right now. Now, you can shoot for the stars if you want to, but I'm going to shoot for a ladder. Amen. I've done the star shooting a few times. and But I've learned that progression sometimes, progression in God sometimes is a slow process. It's a daily process. And so if we can set our minds and our, our thoughts upon God, I want to be greater than I am right now. God, I want to be a step higher. God, I want to be a step higher. God, I, I want to be increased in knowledge in the Word of God. I want to be increased in the anointing and the power. Now, let me tell you something. You can't ask that and do nothing. You can't ask that and just sit on your hands. God's going to require something of you. I'll never forget when I was, I don't know, uh, 16, 17 years old, and I, I was just a punk kid, and, and uh, I was dating this beautiful woman sitting here on the front seat. To, and uh, you guys know we've been together almost 40 years. Ain't that a sight? But anyway, I was dating her, and, and I, I had this little Toyota car, and, and, and it, it was funny. My dad, my dad and myself worked hard. We, we put a hot tar roof on a house, and the guy, instead of paying us, gave us this old car. And uh, dad wanted me to have it, and he gave it to me. And uh, it had been wrecked, and you, you follow that car, and it went down the road sideways. Honest to goodness. It, it was the funniest looking thing you ever seen in your life. It was a good running little car. Amen. But, uh, but anyway, I was in this little Toyota car and I picked up my sweetheart from mama's house. I can tell these stories now because I'm married to her. Mama can't do nothing about it, mama, okay? But we left her house and boy, we was clicking off down the highway and I was clicking off some kind of fast with that toy, little Toyota. I was doing all a Toyota could do in that day. Amen. Especially a crooked one. And I was moving on down the highway and guess what I seen in the rear view mirror? I seen those beautiful, fantastic blue lights that just makes my day every time I see them and he pulled me over and I he had to chase me down because I was running about 80 mile an hour and he pulled me over and, and uh, he walked up to me at my car and he looked in the window and he looked in the back seat and I believe we had Belinda with us too that's even worse mom I'm sorry I had two of your kids but anyway but uh, he looked in the back seat and he looked at Sister, Sister Karen, and it was just Karen then, and he looked at me and he said, son, I got, you just got, you just got to be on emergency. And I said, well, no. And he said, uh, one of these girls have got to be sick. You got to be taking one of these girls to the emergency room. And I said, well, no. He said, there's got to be something. You, you're, you got to be going to somewhere. Somebody's sick. Somebody's hurt. Somebody's bad, and I, you know, I, one thing I was taught, I wasn't going to lie to him. And, and so I said, no. And he said, then please tell me exactly why you're driving like you're driving. I said, well, I guess it's just ignorance. And he said, well, ignorance has just got you a ticket. He said, you were doing this the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, he wrote me a pretty hefty ticket. So I went home. I'm the youngest of six kids. I'm the baby of the family. So I went home and I told mom about it. So mom, I got a speeding ticket today and I, I, I know I shouldn't have got it and I know I shouldn't have been speeding, but mom, I, I, I can't pay it. Mom said, son, I know you didn't mean to. You didn't mean to. If my sisters and brothers are watching me tonight, they're going to say, we told you you was a poor brat. Mom said, I understand it was an accident. Accidents are had to happen. Mom said, Dad and I will help you take care of it. I said, hallelujah. So I went about my day. Evening come by, come by, and Dad got off of work, and I was milling around the house, and Dad said, son, do you got something to tell me? I said, well, I don't guess I do. And he said, you sure you don't got something to tell me? I said, I don't know that I do. And he said, did, uh, did something happen that, that you got caught by the law? And I said, oh, yeah, that. 
I said, yeah, Dad. And I, so I told him the story. And I said, I didn't know. I didn't realize I was going that fast. And I just didn't mean to, Dad. And, and uh, Mom said, you and, you and her would help me take care of it. And he said, oh, she did. And I said, yeah, that's what Mom said. About like I'm looking now, that's what Mom said. And Dad said, me and Mom, it's not helping you pay a dime. And boy, my heart fell down in my stomach. He said, this is what I suggest you do. I got a brand new lawnmower out there in the yard. You better go get it and start mowing you some yards. And I did. And I mowed them. And I mowed them. And I mowed them. And I mowed them. I'm not talking about a computer product. Amen. I mowed until I raised the money to pay that ticket. You know what? I learned it cost me something. It cost me something. And so progression, so progression is going to cost us something as we go forward for the kingdom of God. Now, I want, I want, to, I want to bring some things down, and I, I want to wrap this thing up as, as pretty as I can. These folk got a long way to drive. Amen. But Abram trained them and taught them the way to go. Now, I want to say something at the end of that beautiful story that I just told you. It was approximately 22, 23 years before I got a another speeding ticket amen you hear me it taught me a lesson dad taught me a lesson amen when you got to pay your own bill it'll teach you a lesson my dad had this theory and my dad had this saying there's lessons taught and there's lessons bought and dad said that lesson just bought that that lesson just cost you something you bought that one and I did, and I learned a lesson on that, and it's years since it's happened since then. Now, since we cut this church at Paragould, I've got two out here on this interstate, so I can't talk much more about that. But anyway, that's a different story. So I'm telling you, that is 55 out there, not 65. If you ain't figured that out yet, you better hear my warning. It's 55. Just because it's an interstate don't mean it's not 55. That's what the officer told me, and I believe him. Amen. But Stephen was a preacher of the gospel. Can anybody agree with that? Stephen, in the book of Acts, you'll find that Stephen was a preacher of the gospel. In Acts 6, verse number 8 through 15, you'll find that Stephen, he was, he was proclaiming, he was a preaching. And the Bible, I love what the Bible says about Stephen. He said he was full of faith and power. Hallelujah. Can somebody get a hold of that? Look at here. Is Stephen full of, full of faith and power? Did great wonders and miracles among the people. Now, I wonder if we could get full of faith and power, we could do the latter part of verse number eight as Stephen did. Look here, look what it says. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. And there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the uh, Libertines, of the uh, Cyrenians, uh, and uh, the Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and Asia, disputing with Timothy. Amen. Disputing with Stephen. Amen. They begin to bring a dispute up with him. Now I'm going to say something there. Anytime you begin to do something for God, you can guarantee there's somebody's going to come an uprising against you. Somebody's going to begin to speak out against you. Amen. And so this uprise, they begin to speak against him. And they were not able to resist. Oh, I love this. They were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Now I like this part right here. I like the wisdom part, but I really like this part. Look at that. He said they couldn't resist. They couldn't resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Now, folks, it, it helps by the way we present the gospel. Amen. So they couldn't, they couldn't resist. They couldn't come against him. They couldn't find no cause against him because of his wisdom and his spirit by which he spake. Then they summoned men which said, We have heard him speak 
blasphemous words against Moses and against God. There's always going to be somebody that's going to lie about you. When you start doing something for the kingdom, the devil's going to find somebody that try to put in the midst of it all to try to muck it all up. Amen. And so these guys showed up and they began to tell lies and said, we've heard him say words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people. Man, I can't stand a pot stirrer. Oh, me. Man, I don't like it. I don't like it when people stir pot, especially in the church. It's just stirring up stuff all the time, stirring up problems and looking for something to just stir up. You need your new job. Amen. My dad preached a message one time on dogs in a church, and he said there's some are just pointers. <laughs> anyway, he said, uh, and they stirred up the people. And they stirred up the elders, and they stirred up the scribes, and they came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses, which said, this man, this man ceases not to speak blasphemy words against this holy place. And the law is getting worse, the story is told. You notice this? It's getting worse. The story is getting bigger. The lie is getting bigger. There's he speaking blasphemy words against this holy place and the law. For we heard him say it. Now, a while ago, is somebody come telling us, now we heard him say it. Amen. Savannah used to come to me all the time, our youngest daughter, and say, Dad, they say, and she'd tell me this long story. I'd say, who's they? Well, I, I don't know. It's just they. I said, well, until you can find out who they are, let's not talk about this conversation. All right, amen. So they come and said, now we've heard it ourselves. Amen, we, we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place. He shall change the customs which, amen, Moses delivered unto us. And all that sit in the council looking steadfastly on him saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Now opposition rose up against them. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to build a, a, a basics here on my, on my message. Opposition will rise up against us when we begin to do the things that God wants us to do. Has anybody gone through any spiritual opposition? Come on, I'm not talking about you just got to, you know, this problem and that problem. I'm talking about spiritual opposition. I mean, when the devil, you knew. It may took you a few minutes to figure it out, but, but when you looked at it, you realized the devil's behind this. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, the devil's behind this. I mean, everything was going good. All of a sudden, things go awry, and all of a sudden, things begin to be said, and, and rumor, the rumor mill begins to flow, and things get told, uh, maybe out of context, and, and, uh, and different things are said. And next thing you know, you got a problem on your hand. And Stephen's just out preaching. Come on, folks. Stephen's just out doing what he can do. Stephen's out minding his own business trying to win souls for the kingdom. And somebody comes along and don't like what he's doing and they start finding fault. And Stephen can't find no fault, so they make something up. Until you've been there, you don't know how that feels. That hurts. That hurts. Amen. And so Stephen here, man, he's in a dilemma. Now they got him before the council and now they're all looking at him, and boy, I like what it says. It said they saw his face as it had been the face of an angel, but they didn't stop there. That would have been a good sign to leave this dude alone, right? Amen. If you're picking on a guy and you sit down before him, and all of a sudden you see the face of an angel, you better leave that guy alone. But it didn't stop them. They were determined to destroy the ministry of Stephen. They were determined to do so. If you drop down to, uh, act, if you go to Acts 7 and 54 through 60, it tells the, the latter part of this, and I don't mean to keep turning my back on you. We, we were fixing to put a monitor up there, but, but in Acts, uh, 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 what did I tell you, Tony? 7, 7 and 54 through 60, did I not tell you that? Go there anyway. Amen. He's good enough to do it. I got confidence in him. Amen. Acts 7, 54. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, we're waiting on Tony. Eh? Here he is. Amen. And when they heard these things, they, they cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. We're still talking about Stephen. 
Amen. Stephen is he's being attacked. He's been he's been reviled against. Now they're just coming at him with sharp words and they're and they're gnashing at him. And, and you tell me words don't hurt. Words hurt, friend. They hurt. They hurt. They hurt. I'm telling somebody they hurt. And they begin to gnash at him and and and, and they 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 saw the glory of God in Jesus. Amen. But Peter, but he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfast. You'll find that they 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 stoned in Peter and 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 Peter Peter when he was being stoned, he he lifted up his eyes and into heaven and he saw the glory of God, Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He saw him standing there. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna say something about that, and I I'm gonna try to find a place to jump off of this thing. But but not many places will you find where Jesus is standing up. Through the scripture, you'll find that it talked about Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. You'll talk about him sitting. You'll find several different scriptures about him sitting. But not many scriptures do you find that Jesus is standing up. But we find, uh, find Stephen looking up, seeing Jesus standing up at the right hand of God. What, why would Jesus stand up? He meant Jesus is standing up to welcome Stephen into the family of God. To welcome. Stephen is fishing to lose his life. He's fishing to die for the cause. Would you die for the cause? We may be coming to that place, folk. We may be coming to the place where we get jailed for the cause. Amen. Are you willing to go to jail for the cause? We may be coming to that place, friend. Amen. I'm telling you, when they show up in this parking lot and they tell me that it's either go to jail or preach the gospel, I'm going to jail. Amen. If they tell me I can't preach the gospel or I'm going to jail, I said it backwards, didn't I? If I can't preach the gospel or going to jail, I'm going to jail. Amen. Why? Because there's somebody in the jail that needs saved too. Hello, can I tell you, we got to learn how to stand up for what is right when the servant becomes the soldier, when the servant. Now, now Stephen didn't know anything about, about all of this that's bringing against him, but he laid no charge against them. He, he asked God to forgive them in the next verse or two. He asked God to have mercy upon them and forgive them. Amen. You know why? Because there was something bigger in him than was them. Now, it's hard sometimes to pray for those that bring harm to you. But the Word of God said, you pray for them. You pray for them that persecute you, harm you. For you ladies, Esther in the Bible days was just a pretty little girl that Worked around the king's house. and But there was a time in her life when God expected her to be more. And God spoke to her. He man, when, when Mordecai caused to bring harm. And uh, God began to speak to her and begin to talk to her. I want to read these verses and we'll stop with this one. But did I give you that one? How about that? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you something. That boy ain't ever wrong. If it ain't on there, it ain't his fault. It's mine. Amen. Especially when it comes to this stuff. Now, other stuff, I don't know. On that night, could not the king sleep? And he commanded to bring the books of the records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. What scriptures did I give you? Esther six, Esther 6 and 1. Let's just let's, let's go there. On that night, that's what we have. I'm going to read this. I don't know where I'm at. I'm not there. Somebody get your Bible on the book of Esther, Esther for me. Find this in verse number one. When Mordecai perceived that all, all that had was done. You looking for it? We're going to find it. 
I ain't no hurry. You in a hurry? Good. I give Tony, huh? Four. Tony, go there. It's a typo of the pastor. Four and one. Can you bring up one, two? I'm waiting patiently. That's better. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out in the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry. And he came before the king's gate, and none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. Keep going. And in every province whatsoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping because Esther had asked them to pray and fast. They were fasting and weeping and wailing, and many lay in the sackcloth, the ashes, because Mordecai is determined to kill the Jews. Okay? Just, just kind of fill you in. So Esther's maid and her chamberlain came and told it to her. Then was the king exceedingly grieved, the queen was exceedingly grieved, and she sent raiment clothed to Mordecai to take away his sackcloth for him, but he received it not. Okay. Then called Esther to Hatak, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to tend upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hatak went forth to Mordecai unto the streets of the city, which was before the king's gate. We're reading. And Mordecai told him all that happened to him and of the sum of the money that Haman, Haman was the one that built the gallows that was planted on, planted on hanging. And you remember, you remember the story? And, and, and had promised to pay the king's treasure for the Jews to destroy them. And he gave him the copywriting, the decree that was given to Shushan to destroy him, to show it unto Ash Esther, to declare unto her, and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication to him and make requests before him for her people. Now they're saying, we need you to go in before the people. And Hatak came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Mordecai is the uncle of Esther. I'm getting the story right now, okay? I mean, I'm getting, it's coming to me. It's slow, but it's coming. Amen. Now, now, what he's telling Esther, I need you to go before the king and tell him about what Haman is up to. Now, Esther understood, and we're going to find what she understands. She just can't go before the king. Amen. You just can't go. So let's read on. And so we find that, that this was told under Mordecai. Come on, let's go living computer freeze up and the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces said do know that whatsoever whosoever whether man or woman should come into the king into the inner court who is not called the gear Esther knew this and he said whoever comes to the king's inner court that is not called there is one law of his to put him to death Here's an exception. Except such to whom the king should hold out the golden scepter. Amen. That he may live, but I have not been called to come to the king these 30 days. They've been on a 30-day fast. They've been on a 30-day praying. And she said, I've not been requested to come. You're asking me to do something that could be my life. Listen to me. You're asking me to do something. And they, they told Mordecai Esther's words. Let's go a little farther, Tony. And Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. He's asked her a question. You think that, that they're going to let you go too? They're going to kill the Jews. You think they're going to let you go too? For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall there be enlargements and deliverance rise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. I love this part. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Now I love that part. Amen. He said, who knoweth 
that you come into the kingdom for such a time as this. I'll draw this story in. We find that Esther went. Amen. She got herself ready. She got herself fixed up. And she went. And the scepter was given to her. And she was able to go before the king. Amen. My point to you tonight is you may feel unqualified. You may feel like it's not your place or your position. You may feel like that that uh, others have tried it and failed. Amen. It may even be out of your comfort zone. Esther said, you're asking me a tough thing. I've not been requested. I've not been asked to come. I know what the law says. The law says if I go, amen, and before him without request, I can be put to death. Amen. I understand that. Amen. But her uncle Mordecai would say, but I believe that God's called you for such a time as this. I wish every one of us would get a hold of that tonight and admit that to herself that I believe God has called us for such a time as this. Let's not miss our moment. Let's not miss our opportunity. Let's not miss our chance. Uh, amen. Let's be like an Esther that I get up and say, you know what? I'm going to go on in the king's gate and I'm going to believe with everything I got that that golden scepter will be stretched out for me. Can I tell you, the enemy was hung on his own gallows Read it for yourself. He meant what he meant for harm. It turned around and fell on himself. The Bible talks about a man. He said, beware that you dig a pit and fall into it yourself. Be careful what you do. Amen. But don't miss your opportunity. If Abram can take a bunch of ragtag servants, they ain't never wore nothing but aprons. If Abram can take a bunch of servants and make them soldiers, what can God do with us? Amen? What can God do with us? Now you say, now we don't have 318 people, Pastor. I'm going to tell you what the Word says. The Word says, one can chase a thousand. Two could put ten thousand to flight. Amen. Now I never was any good at math, but count every how many is in here, that's how many devils we can we should be chasing. Amen. You figure it up. Amen. It went from one thousand. Two went to ten thousand. There's a there's a great multiplication taking place there. Amen. If if we can do that, then what what would God do for you and I? What would God do for us? We could, we could change, we could change somebody's life to a good. Amen. We could turn. You know what they said about those old disciples? You know what they said about them? Brother Dwayne, after Pentecost, they asked them, said, are you they that turned this town upside down? Amen. Oh, wouldn't that be something if somebody called and said, is this the church that has turned this town upside down? Amen. Is this the church that is shaking this city? Is this the church that's, that's pulling them off the streets and winning them for the kingdom of God? Is this the church that's doing it? Amen. Is this the place? Is this where it's happening? Or do they say, ah, oh, there ain't nothing happening there? Amen. I'm going to tell you something that's hard to break out of, and that's hard. something that's hard to break out of is a bad, a bad history. You hear me? I appreciate everybody that's ever pastored this church. Now, not this church, but this church. You know what I'm talking about. But this church has a terrible history. And there's nothing any worse than trying to struggle to bring out a church with a bad history. I'm not blaming it on any preacher. I believe every preacher that come through here were good people. Good people, good people. I blame a lot of it on, in, on, 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 on placement. I blame a lot of it on the environment. I blame a lot on, I don't know. I don't know. But when you have that, it's hard to shake out of it. But I hear a shaking going on in the mulberry trees. Amen. Amen. I hear shaking going on in the mulberry trees. Amen. The last few months, 
Last, I don't know, six, seven months, eight months, I've had two different people tell me, he said, there's three abundant life churches in Perigold, Arkansas. I said, well, there is. And they said, there is. I said, I didn't know that. And so I said, we're just going to stick with our heritage. We're going to just change ours to abundant life Pentecostal church of God. That way we set that. We set that apart real quick. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not ashamed of that. I'm not ashamed of my Pentecostal experience. Now, I'm not talking about denominational things here at all. I'm part of a denomination, but I'm not talking about that. I didn't get saved for a denomination or by a denomination. I'm part of it. I sit on the board of one. Amen. But I tell you something. Denomination didn't get me nowhere. God did. Amen. If anything's going to turn the denomination, just made sure the bills are paid on a rundown building down the road just to keep the doors open, keeping it from shutting down. Amen. Until somebody showed up and said, we're going to move this thing up the street and try to do a little better. And I told you before, this is not our permanent dwelling place. I don't know if you got it or not, but this is not our permanent dwelling place. This is just step two on the journey. God's got something bigger and better for us somewhere down the line. I believe that with all of my heart. I don't care how many gets behind me. I heard God when he said it. I heard God when he said it when I went and looked at a bigger location and a better location God said not yet not yet he didn't say no he just said not yet and so until then I'll occupy here until it fills up to the place we can't hold no more and we'll begin to venture out and do something greater for the kingdom of God but I need some people to get on board with me and say we don't want to just be servants we want to be soldiers in the army of God and we'll fight with you preacher when I say fight with me, I don't want you fighting with me. Boy, people say all the time, preacher, I got you back. Well, it's easy to have my back when the devil's beating my front off. How about get beside me? How about an Aaron and a her? Amen. How about saying, you know what? We're going to connect. Connect with that. Connect with that. And when the connection is made, movement takes place. You hear me? When connection is made, movement takes place. An example, if you run your truck off in a ditch, I'll pull my truck up in front of yours. I'll hook my chain to your truck. Connection has been made. And movement's going to take place. Either I'm going to pull my bumper off or I'm pulling you out of that ditch. One or two things are going to happen. Man, all I need you to do is hang on for the ride. Amen. But when connection made, movement is made. How long has it been since we've been all together here as a church and yet we've not connected? Isn't it something we can come to church every Sunday but not get connected? Amen. Chain is no good. Chain is not worth a dime. Till it's hooked to the object that's stuck. And then it's got to be hooked to something that's not stuck. Then that chain becomes the purpose of movement. Somebody's got to be the pulling force. Somebody's got to be the chain. Man, I'll be writing this stuff down. <laughs> I'll buy my own CD. Anyway, but when Abram made his servant soldiers, I'm going to work on this some more. I'm careful what I say. But when God showed me this, God spoke to me and said, I'm going to have you preach this somewhere beside where you are. So I'm going to work on this some more. I don't know where God's going to have me preach this, but I'm going to work on it. I will tell you what he told me, but I ain't going to tell you. I'm just not. Just not. But God told me he's going to use me somewhere to preach that. Amen. So, let's work. Now, our church is on a 21-day fast. At least some of us are. I don't get mad at you if you don't. I promise you I don't. I promise you I don't. But some of us have agreed to come together on a 21-day fast and and we're, we're praying and fasting for these first 21 days. And uh, we've made it as, as simple as we possibly can for you. And listen to me. If you've got health problems and you've got issues with your health, talk to your doctor. 
I have a Christian doctor. I have no problem talking to my doctor about fasting. I have no problem whatsoever. I didn't because I don't need his advice on that. But anyway, because I'm going to do it anyway. But, uh, but you talk to him if you feel like you need to. But let's, let's, let's work hard on this. And let's see what God does after 21 days. And like I told you, some of us may go to 31 days. We may go through the whole month. And, uh, but we're going to believe God for some good, good things. Wednesday night, Wednesday night, we're going to try again, Sister Jennifer. Wednesday night is our last class. And it uh, wasn't her fault. It wasn't her fault. It was Ashley's fault. Nah, just kidding. Um, people were sick. And uh, we're under that policy. If you're sick and more than one sick, we don't come together. Okay. And so we was unable to do so. And um, But we need to get this class in. This is our last class. And then Sister Jennifer is starting that new ministry in January. And um, we're looking at maybe the... 27th, did you say, of launching that new ministry? Don't y'all love new ministries? Man, I love them. I love them. New ministries, and um, it's called Abundant Freedom Recovery Group. Amen? Abundant Freedom. Thank you, Lucas. Amen. He's giving me a hand clap. I finally got it right. And um, so, listen. We're going to need help. She needs volunteers for this. We're going to start small, but I'm believing that it's going to grow fast. And when it does, she's going to need help. Now, now, automatically, and you married couples understand this, her husband is automatically involved by virtue of marriage, <laughs> whether he likes it or not. And I will tell you this, Brother Lucas has already, already reached out to Someone in our community that was that was um, sent to us that was in need, and, and I'm proud of him. He's he's reached out and reached out again, and, and I think even today, and I'm proud of him. But they're going to need help with this. Um, our classes will be starting up just um, not this Wednesday night, but the following Wednesday night. Eric, brother Eric, will be teaching our classes. Children's ministry will start back then too. Children's ministry will start back then too. I said children's ministry will start back then too. Thank you. My Lord, I got to beg for something anymore. And um, so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, so y'all be working on all that, getting that ready. And be praying. Be praying about our new ad adventure out yonder. Our building out there has got to be, got to be um, everything. It's got to be, I mean, all we got is a skeleton. But thank God we got a skeleton. We don't have to pay for that. It's dry. Amen. And so uh, we got something to work for. That's, that's all. Who was it that God spent to the valley of dry bones? Ezekiel. That's all Ezekiel had was a skeleton. Amen. And they were a messed up skeleton. God told him to prophesy over them. And they come together an exceedingly great army. So all we got is a skeleton, but we're going to prophesy over it. We're going to pray over it. We're going to seek God over it. That's going to be our youth building. The, 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 are we still recording? Love y'all. God bless you. We'll see you real soon. Pray for us. Amen.